Hey guys, welcome. I am Dr. Stewart and today we're going to talk about this um, paper on HIV. This is the um, Laura Dwyer Lindgren uh, paper that was published uh, just this last year in 2019 on the mapping of HIV prevalence in Sub-Saharan Africa between 2000 and 2017. Alright, so um, really good paper and the first thing I want you to kind of notice about it is that look at all those authors. We've got like 20 or 30 authors that have um, pu written and published this paper and I think that's the first sign that this is a huge effort and a huge body of work if you have so many different scientists that are kind of participating on the same project. All right. Not necessarily, I'm not saying that every article that has all these scientists that has a lot of authors is like a good study, it's just that's a good indication there's a lot of work involved. All right. So um, in the discussion post, I uh, kind of proposed a series of questions that I wanted you guys to answer, and we'll kind of step through those questions as we go through um, this paper. And I put, for convenience, I'm going to put these questions into the, the description on the YouTube video as well. All right, so question number one is, which journal is this published in? How does this journal compare to others? Why do you think this journal, why do you think this article is published in this journal? Well, this guy is published in Nature, right? In Nature along with science, are probably the two most prestigious journal, um, peer-reviewed scientific journals that exist in our world today. And what that means is that it's incredibly difficult to get work published in these journals. These journals are only going to uh, publish articles that have a broad kind of um, that, that are of interest to a broad audience. They're only going to publish articles that describe some really significant findings um, from scientific experiments. And typically, they're only going to publish articles that describe experiments that were done correctly. So this is like the, the journal article that's only going to publish the best of the best. I remember back when I was in graduate school, actually, I was a postdoc, and um, I was working on geckos and how they're able to like stick and clean the different surfaces. And um, we found some cool stuff about these geckos, and my uh, mentor and I wanted to publish it in um, in science. And so we wrote it up, and we spent all this time, like weeks and weeks, preparing the, the manuscript for science. We submitted it with these high hopes that we were going to actually be the ones that get it published. Well, less than 24 hours, we got our rejection letter, right? I mean, this is just so hard to get published in, um, in, these, um, in these journals. All right, so... It's a big deal, obviously, that it's even in this journal to begin with. Now, um, da -da -da -da, number two, before you read this article, was your perception of HIV in Africa? Do you know it was a problem? Which areas do you believe were the most affected? It's okay if you didn't much know much about this. To be honest, I mean, before I really started to do some research on HIV a couple years ago, as I was you know, teaching these classes, I knew that HIV was a problem in Africa, but I had no clue which areas were most affected. And or anything like that. I thought that it was just kind of this blanket problem of Africa. And that is what we'll learn in this um, journal article is really not the case. There's definitely regions that are more affected by HIV than others. And that is important to know because that allows us to kind of better understand where to target our efforts to reduce HIV prevalence. Right? All right, so what is the main question this, this paper is trying to address, and how do they go about answering this question? Well, really, this paper is trying to understand which specific areas in Africa are the most affected by HIV. They're trying to understand which very specific, small-scale geographic areas are the most affected, because previously, um, studies have looked at which countries have the highest prevalence rate of HIV, and that's good to know, but oftentimes certain areas of a specific country might have a higher prevalence than others, and knowing that information is crucial in targeting our efforts to, to help uh, HIV, right? So, and how they address this? Well, this is the, they collected all this data, and they looked at all this data between 2000 and 2017, 17 years, and they basically mapped these uh, data on, um, on, you know, using figures to show us which areas are the most affected by HIV and how those areas are changing over time, right? All right, da da da. All right, in your own words, what's the take home message of figure one? And does panel A look different than panel B? So here is figure one, and this shows the prevalence of HIV in adults aged 15 to 49 in 2017. So if we look at panel A, this shows the prevalence by country. So really, they're just showing you which countries are the most affected. 
Um, if we were to kind of look and see what's going on here, you're gonna have we're gonna have South Africa right there. It's gonna have a very high prevalence of around 15 to 20 percent, and then um, you're gonna have Botswana. I'm just gonna label that B, which is gonna be right there, right? And then these smaller countries on the um, on the coast of South Africa also have a high prevalence of around 25%. Let's just think about that. 25% of the folks that live in these countries have HIV. That means that if you run into four people, one of them is gonna have HIV. That's crazy high, right? If we were to look at the prevalence of HIV in America, I believe it is, actually I don't know this off the top of my head. Let me see this. Oh my gosh, 13.3 by 100,000 people, um, that's 0.01%. So, big difference. The prevalence rate in the U.S. is 0.01%. In some of these countries, we're looking at a prevalence rate of like 22% in Botswana, I believe. So that is just wild and a crazy, I don't know, horrible uh, kind of stat to even think about. Now, if we go back to figure one, the main kind of, I don't know, um, improvement that this study has offered is that the difference between panel A and panel D is the fact that in panel D, they looked at the prevalence of HIV, but on a much finer geographical scale on this five by five kilometer um, cell in panel D. And you'll see that you can really get a better estimate about which areas are the most affected. Like, so if we go back to South Africa, you'll see that the the west coast of South Africa, or the west side of South Africa, has a much lower prevalence, around 5%, versus the east coast, which is much higher, around 25% or even higher. Then, if you look at Botswana, same kind of situation exists. East coast, much worse off than the west uh, side, or the east, eastern border is much worse off than the western border. Now, this is crucially important because, let's say you are in charge of directing the you know, efforts to reduce HIV in these South African countries. Knowing which parts of the country are most affected is going to be really important to you because you can direct your resources exactly where they need to be and not necessarily worry so much about um, the areas that, that aren't as drastically affected. So this is just a really important advancement in trying to understand what's going on. Okay. Now, I've highlighted this little area right here. Um, and when we're talking about kind of this widespread differences in HIV prevalence, it goes, this variation was apparent within countries with relatively high overall HIV prevalence. For example, in Botswana, the overall national prevalence was around 23%. So I was a little off. What did I label it as? 22%? That's fine. 23%. All right. But the districts ranged from around 15.1% on the... Was that the West Coast? So in Botswana, like that 15.1%, that would be like right in there. And then if we go over to the West Coast, in the Gonzi district is up to almost 30, 27.7%. Uh, so almost 30% of the folks in Botswana are going to be affected with HIV. So we have 30% there and only like 15% there. So a huge difference in kind of how um, many folks have HIV depending on what we're talking about or depending on which area we're talking about. So this is really important for us to kind of understand that. Now let's go back to our questions. Let's see here. Um, what's going on with, with uh, figure two? So figure two is nice because figure two is showing you how the prevalence of HIV is changing over time. These purple colors, that's bad, that means that more and more people are getting HIV, and the greener colors, that's good, that means that those areas are exhibiting a reduction in the incidence of HIV. And the same deal, panel A is just on the country kind of scale, whereas panel D is on um, a much finer kind of five by five kilometer um, scale. Now, what you can kind of take from this is that obviously by zooming in on a finer scale, you get a much more complete picture of exactly um, what's going on. Let's take South Africa, for example, right? So if we zoom in on panel A, it looks like South Africa is exhibiting a, a pretty kind of moderate increase in the number of HIV cases that you can um, experience. So this is South Africa right here. It's like pink, but it's not this dark purple, right? So you might say, oh, well, South Africa is a problem, but it's not that bad. I mean, it's not as 
um, drastic as it possibly could be. I mean, that's not the best interpretation of this graph. I'm just trying to in interpret, um, kind of illustrate a point here. But if we look at the finer scale of what's going on, you'll see that, yes, yeah, certain areas of South Africa are increasing at a slower rate. Like this area might be increasing by um, a very slow rate, whereas these areas on the West Coast are increasing at a very dramatic rate. So knowing this finer scale kind of distribution of how things are improving or getting worse is super important in understanding um, how to direct your efforts. Now Botswana, now if we remember Botswana had like the highest um, prevalence of any uh, country from figure one. But if we look at it, Botswana on the whole is actually improving. It's um, reducing the number of cases in HIV that, that are occurring and that's indicated by these green areas. But you can actually see that if we zoom in on Botswana, some of these parts of the country are improving very dramatically, like on the western border, like right there. Whereas um, on the sort of, is that what? Yeah, yeah. And whereas the southern kind of parts of the country are, aren't as improving as dramatically. And in fact, right here on the east coast, you're going to have parts of Botswana which are actually um, increasing the number of prevalence. So this would be like an arrow that goes up. There, whereas in green we have uh, going down, right? So it's really important to kind of understand the finer scales of how these countries are changing. All right, perfect. Now, if we go to something that looks different about figure three, this is number six um, versus the first two images. Do you know what it is? What I was after here. So no, this is question number six, figure three. So here is figure three, and this is a graph showing the number of people living in HIV for adults age 15 to 49, right? Well, one thing that really jumped out to me was the fact that we, you know, we get some really, um, so the pink colors, let me just explain it. The pink colors represent a high number of people, whereas the more paler colors represent a low number of people um, in the population. So on the, on the South African countries, specifically along the East Coast, we get all these dark pink uh, splotches that represents that a lot of people with HIV live there. Well, let's look at Botswana. Like if we go to Botswana, which is right there above South Africa, there's really not many purple dots. And the reason that is is because Botswana is not a heavily populated country. So that's also a really important thing to understand is that even though there's a high proportion of people that have HIV here, there's not a lot of people living in this country. So it's not going to account for most of the, the HIV cases in the country. On the flip side, if we go over here, look at this area right here. Look at all these pink splotches. That's a lot of folks with HIV. In fact, if you were to look at this graph alone and not the other two graphs, you might predict that the biggest problem areas for HIV in Africa are the South East African coast down here, and then Western Africa, um, the coast right here in this little bite area right there. Now, that's because this area right there around Ghana, I believe, is very heavily populated. So there's a lot of folks with HIV there, even though if we go back up to figure one, this is a country or a region that doesn't have a very high HIV prevalence. So depending on which graph you look at, it tells a completely different story. And in fact, it's really important to look at figure three. So let's say you were in charge, like, I don't know, you're some director of HIV I don't know, task force, and you're in charge of directing where the, the world is going to send all of our efforts to improve HIV, or right, to reduce HIV prevalence. If you were to um, look at figure three, you would probably direct those efforts to these regions I've circled right here, right? Southeast Africa, and then the west coast of Africa, about halfway down around Ghana. However, if you didn't see that graph and you were only looking at figure one, you might completely forget to send your efforts and your, your resources to the west coast of Africa and only focus on these um, countries like Botswana and South Africa and those other countries on the south um, east coast. And you would miss all those millions of people that are infected by HIV up in Ghana. So this is um, just, um, it just goes to show how tricky and powerful different figures can be based on, I mean, both of these figures are correct, 
but they just tell completely different stories on the data. And so just keep an eye out for that when you look at other papers, but also when you look at like, I don't know, uh, figures and, and, and graphs, even in the news and the media about um, other things going on in the world, right? Now, figure seven, did anything you read in this article surprise you about HIV? So this is obviously a personal question, so um, no answer is, is wrong there, but what struck me, right, a couple of things. I didn't realize that some parts of Africa had a prevalence rate of almost uh, like 30%. That is just mind-boggling to me and incredibly scary. Another thing that um, really struck out to me was this sentence right here. Globally, the large-scale expansion of ART this stands for antiretroviral treatment, coverage has reduced mortality among people living with HIV, offsetting declines in incidence and resulting in an overall increase in HIV prevalence since 2000. This is the scariest and probably the saddest thing that is kind of coming out of this whole HIV. Antiretroviral treatments are becoming more and more prevalent and effective. And this allows someone with HIV to live indefinitely. So before, without antiretroviral treatment, after you contract HIV, after a period of about 8 to 10 years, you develop AIDS and you typically, unfortunately, pass away, right, due to complications with AIDS. Now with antiretroviral treatments, these folks can live for much longer, you know, indefinitely, decades. Well, because they're not dying, more folks continue to spread HIV to more people and that is spreading the HIV at a faster rate. So in other words, antiretroviral treatments are in fact increasing the spread of HIV in many parts of Africa. There's another paper, which we're not going to discuss due to time, but it looked at which demographics are actually spreading um, HIV the fastest, and it turns out that males ages like 18 to, to 40, right? So a very broad range of, of males, right? But these, no, actually it was like ages uh, 25 to 40 are the ones that are getting these antiretroviral treatments. They know they have AIDS, but they continue to have sex with a wide number of partners, spreading this uh, disease and this virus um, faster than they would have if they weren't treated with art because they would have died. And I, that's like a problem that... I don't even know how to um, uh, approach that one. So that was the biggest surprise for me. And that about does it for the article. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.